Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Story inspired by Samantha Michelle. I looked at the list of people I had to invite to the graduation. I had asked everyone to come, friends and enemies. My alarm went off, letting me know it was time to start getting ready. I liked that the university had a gowns optional policy. I didn't like having to pay $50 for a cheap piece of nylon. Getting used to hiding behind locked doors for years paid off. Yesterday, I drove hundreds of miles to a city where no one knew me. I had to pay a lot for the makeover and waxing, but I wanted to look my best today. Things I wanted to do during the school year but couldn't. Like how my new nails and eyebrows look great, but it didn't matter anymore. When I finally got out of the shower, I felt my face, which was smooth and hairless. Electrolysis finally got rid of my horrible beard. It had been a lot of work to find the right doctoral candidate. Two years ago, I agreed to be a test subject for a study on hormones. Tina was almost done with her thesis. She was very likely to get her PhD in biochemistry, but for almost two years, I had to dress like I was fat to hide the fact that I was getting thinner. No sports, no swimming, but today's end was worth waiting for. The silk chemise and light corset came next. The corset was more about how it made me feel than anything else, but it took two inches off my waist, which was already small, and helped me stand up straighter and walk better. It was shocking to see how different I looked from my normal self. I was so happy to never have to wear the extra padding I had been wearing to hide my secret. After putting on my stocks, I put on my knee-high dress boots and finally, the formal for my graduation. It was made of soft, ankle-length, real velvet that hugged my body, and the neckline made it clear that I now had a proud, very feminine figure. The long medieval sleeves helped hide the fact that my arms were a little too muscular. Then came makeup and jewelry. I had gotten a lot of flack for having my ears pierced twice and always wearing big rings. Today, I wore geometric bracelets that were almost as long as my shoulders. They went with the bracelets and necklace I'd made out of silver and agate. Sensual, but also proper. I smiled. I finally put my wig on. This was the one change I didn't like as much as the others. Even though hormones had stopped the hair loss, there was no way to deny my genetic background. My hair was long and in good shape, but the top was way too thin. With the help of a crochet hook, a few bobby pins, and special clips, the wig was in place for good after 10 minutes. The story was well told by my mirror. John was gone for good. The fat, strange, and shy student, standing 5'11 in her heels, was a striking, Joanne is who I really am. I changed my mind and looked for flaws. I was too big boned to win a beauty contest. A tall, slim woman looked back at me. I got cold with excitement. For today was much more than just the day I graduated from college. I was getting out of the habit of telling lies all my life. When I went to get my shoulder bag, I made sure that the copies of my court documents that had been notarized were inside. On Friday, a superior court judge in the state capitol granted my request to change my name and gender. I changed my name to Joanne Bethany Richards. John Burton Richards is no longer around. The death of a soul that had been through a lot went unnoticed in the flow of life. I carefully put the cap in a carrier after taking it from my dresser. I drove carefully to the gym where the gradient was held. I knew my dad and most of my other family members would be there, as would a lot of the other people who had teased me for being quiet and kind. It was going to be a big surprise for all of them. I wondered for a moment if I would be able to handle the noise that followed. Jerry and Betsy were waiting for me when I pulled my Jeep into one of the spots set aside for graduating students. They looked at me as I got out of the car, holding my shoulder bag and hat carrier nervously. My God, John, you're gorgeous. I gave Betsy a big grin. On Friday, John died. From now on, everyone will call me Joanne. That made them both hug me. Betsy took a thin nylon cloak out of a bag and put it on. As promised, here's your disguise. When I wore the cloak, my face was hard to see, and they all agreed that no one would be able to figure out who I was. Since the rehearsals were two days before the ceremony, no one would know that fat old John had changed until the ceremony began. At least this year, the undergraduate graduation was held on its own. 
so everyone had a place to sit. From the side of the stage, I could see more and more people coming in. I saw my dad. Julia was with him. She was the mean aunt who had made my life hard after my mother died. I let out an evil chuckle. She had told me over and over that I was weak, sissy, and a shame to my mother's family name. I went to the front of the honors row to sit down. Thomas was flying around making sure everything was in order. He looked like a moth that had been burned by a candle. When he saw me with a hood on, he looked surprised, but another emergency took his attention away. After the national anthem, Thomas gave the required speech about how proud he was of today's graduates. He then gave the podium to the valedictorian. Thaddeus was a great speaker, but he didn't talk for more than five minutes. The doctoral candidates were then told about the news and given presentations. I told myself I'd come back next spring to watch Tina graduate. But that part was over too quickly, and I got more and more nervous. Thomas thanked everyone and then gave out the degrees. He then gave the master's candidates an opening speech. As he got close to the end, I began to shake. We're proud that this year a number of students have earned summa cum laude. As is our tradition, the student who graduates with the best grades will give a short speech honoring this year's master's candidates. The student will be chosen by the deans from this group. He turned around and looked where I was sitting. John Burton Richards stood out by finishing three master's programs at the same time, all of which were cum laude. This is only the fifth time in the school's history that a student has reached this high of a goal. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce John Burton Richards, who is the speaker for this master's class. As I took off the cloak and walked up to the podium, I was shaking like a leaf. As I shook Thomas' hand and turned to face the crowd, his eyes were wide open. Thanks for the great introduction, Thomas. Over the PA system, my soft, low voice reached the shocked crowd. Joanne Bethany Richards is my name, whom you knew as John Burton Richards until Friday. Because today is more than just my last day in these holy halls. It is my graduation from a life of hiding, being afraid of being persecuted and being a woman stuck in a man's body. Thomas didn't know about my change. I'm the only one who chose today to tell the world who I really am. But this event is not my place to speak. The fact that we, the master's program graduates, have overcome the many challenges we've faced on the way to our goals is a sign to everyone. There are no master's degrees given out of kindness in this country. Graduation shows everyone that we have done well. Honors are just another way of recognizing the success that some of us have been lucky enough to achieve. And awards only show what you've done well. There is no way to measure how hard each student works. We can only say, individually and as a group, that we did our best when we look at ourselves. So I want to say the following things to all of the graduates and guests here today, as well as to the faculty of this prestigious school. Peace and freedom are the most important things that people can strive for. And peace and freedom don't come cheap, I paused. But the costs of war and losing our freedom are getting more and more expensive. So I challenge every student who is graduating to use the knowledge they have worked hard to gain to help people who are less fortunate and to fight for peace and freedom for all people. I looked over at Thomas. Sir, I think there are a few of us who can't wait to see those scrolls you've set up so carefully in front of you. I turned around in a smooth way, shook his hand, and saw that he was smiling. As I went back to my seat, I felt happy and warm inside. Thomas didn't give any more speeches. Instead, he signaled to his assistants and had them start reading the names from each scroll. When he started, I almost died. Joanne Bethany Richards, Master of Science in Planning for Communities, Master of Science, Education, and Adult Education, Master of Arts in Education, Special Subjects, Gender Diversity in Education. I was able to get close enough to get the scrolls. He stopped me from leaving the center of attention. I have one more thing to say. Joanne didn't know it, but yesterday the Board of Regents agreed with a suggestion. He was looking at me. Joanne, on behalf of the Regents, myself, and Dr. Vicente, I want to use this brief moment to tell everyone that you have been accepted into the university's doctoral program in education and have been given a full Regent scholarship to help you do this hard work. Congratulations. He shook my hand again. 
and I had just enough time to get to my seat before it started to rain. Not only did I cry, but so did others. Anna Lee, who graduated second, passed out when she heard she could join the College of Mathematics doctoral program. When Becky and then Jerry got their psychology degrees, I stood and cheered. At the end of the graduation ceremony, we were sent off to loud cheers. Becky and Jerry stopped me from leaving alone through the back door. Joanne, you made us promise not to let you run off. So you're going to the party with us. No one can take what you have done away from you, personally or in school. You are the butterfly today, so get ready to take flight. I screamed when someone grabbed me around the waist, lifted me into the air, spun me around, and gave me a hug. My friends were getting ready to fight when my big attacker helped me stand up. Gunter, please don't scare me like that, I said. You look a lot better as Joanne, and congratulations just in case no one else has told you yet. He looked me over. I never thought you'd be one of them, but you turned out really nice. Jerry and Becky looked very nervous, and they were on the verge of freaking out when two more huge muscles joined Gunter. Jerry, Becky, meet Gunter, Adam, and Jimmy. They gave each other a wary look. There are three gorillas here. We're the unfortunate people he tutored the whole last year. Adam smiled. John, er, Joanne was always a little strange, but she never made us feel bad for being jocks, so I guess we shouldn't complain. Jimmy seemed to be afraid. Jimmy, I'm not contagious. I'm not sure if I should congratulate you or ask you out on a date. I gave him a hug. Joanne, we need to get you to the wedding reception. Becky pulled me toward the main floor of the gym. And you three are welcome to help, because there are a lot of people out there who are going to be mean to Joanne. All three big guys were happy. Two of my closest friends and three people I didn't know well were with me. I prayed that everyone else would be as kind as they were. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.